Hey, I'm RC and this is the episode 24 about creating a video game in HTML5. In this video, we will be covering map collision. And basically, if we shoot a bullet and it hits a house or a wall, it should disappear. So the bullet disappears. Same goes for a rock. And we should also prevent the player or the enemies to go over the house or the rock or the water. So that's what I will be covering in this video. So first of all, there are many different types of map collision you can implement. So I will, I will cover the three most popular ones. So the first one is pixel perfect collision. So basically you test for every pixel on the um, actor if it touches a pixel, a solid pixel of the map. So for example, right here, there would be a collision because the very edge of the player touches the log. Um, so one problem with pixel perfect collision is that it's really, there's a lot of computation needed. 99.9% .9 of the time, you will not be using pixel perfect collision. I do not personally recommend it. Um, so yeah, I, I'm just, it's the easiest to understand, I guess. Um, the other very, very popular collision system is polygon shaped. You will see that in many different games. So basically it's um, this. Um, it's approximating the shape of an object with a bunch of rectangles, for example. So this log over here could be approximated with three rectangles, for example, those three rectangles. And this player could be approximated with this, for example, two rectangles. Obviously you could also use um, circles, you could use any polygon shape, basic polygon shape. And the more polygon shapes you have, the more precise the collision will be. Because what you will be doing is testing for each rectangle of the player, You're gonna test with each rectangle of the map if there's a collision. We have already made the code to test collision between two rectangle and it's just doing that over and over and over for each possible collision. Obviously there are ways to speed this up, but this is the general idea behind them. So the polygon shape collision system is um, really good if you want good precision and you want something fast. There's a lot of ways to optimize it. But in this video, we will be using a third way, which is a pixel, um, a tile based um, collision system. So basically we split the map into um, many different tiles. So for example, this is one tile over here. And um, for each of them, we will specify if the player can walk over it or not. So if it cannot, it's gonna be a one. So this is a wall and zero means it's walkable. And we're gonna do that for the entire map. So um, it can be very long to do. Um, there are tools to help you create that. I'm gonna talk a little bit um, later about this. But uh, for now, we'll just assume that you did manage to come up with a a grid with all the one and the zero that matches your image. Okay, so in my case, this is the 2D array containing all the collision for my particular map. So there it is. And now that we have this, we are going at the top, we're gonna create a constant called the tile size that will be equal to 32 in my case, because my tile are 32 big, um, considering I'm enlarging the image by a two factor. So in the, the real image is 16 by 16 per tile, but the, the image is increased by two over here. So it's gonna be 32 pixel. Um, I guess that's pretty much it. Um, so here we're gonna add the grid parameter. Here, grid, grid. So now we can access the grid of the map. So the first thing we are going to do is to create a function that take as a parameter a point and it's gonna return if that point is inside a wall or if it's not inside a wall. So that's um, the goal. So we're gonna call the function is position a wall, is position wall. And the first thing we do is um, we divide the X and the Y by the size of a tile. And the reason, an easy way to understand that is that let's say that the player is at the pixel, it's being drawn at the pixel 16. Um, we don't actually want to use this value over here in the middle, let's add the 16th position, because this is a grid. Each of those number represent a 32 by 32 pixel block. So that's why we divide it by um, the tile size. So for example, if it was 16, 
then it would be um, 16 divided by 32, it's 0.5, mat floor becomes zero. So we do use the first at the top left. So this is what we want. Okay, so after that, we want to check if the position is out of well-known mat. So if it's less than zero or greater than the width, um, we consider it out of bounds. So we return true and same goes for the y. And finally, we return the value. So over here, it might sound strange, but we do the grid y and then the grid x. So it's not the x and y. Normally, we always see like x followed by y, but in that case, it's y followed by x. And the reason is, well, easy way, is this over here, this position over here, this is a 2D array. So this over here is the array or grid, grid zero. So zero, we take the first element over here. And within that element, we take, let's say the fourth one, fourth. So this over here, X, this is the Y because it's the first row and this is four, it's the column. N not sure if it's clear, but just remember when dealing with 2D arrays, it's always the Y followed by the X. There we go. Okay, so now let's move on to the bullet update function. So um, this is called every frame for the bullet. And what we are going to do is we're gonna check a map current um, is position of B. So we check A. Um, is the bullet inside a wall? And if it's the case, we're gonna set to remove equal true. It's as easy as that. Okay, so let's just test what we have done. So I'm gonna switch the map for the new map. You will be able to download the entire project um, in the link in the description. So I changed the map. I'm also gonna change the width and the height of the players. So over here, I'm going to draw the players and the monster 1.5 bigger. Um, it's going to look a little bit better. So there we go. And over here, there we go. I think we're done. So let's just refresh. And this is how it looks. So if I shoot a bullet, as you can see, the bullets do not touch, do not go further than the walls. We still haven't done the logic for the actors. So as a player, I can still walk wherever I want, but it, it's gonna be fixed um, relatively soon. Now, one detail I forgot is this over here should be um, 1 to 80. And actually we don't need this anymore because if we have the grid, um, we can actually just calculate it. So the width is equal to the grid length times the tile size and the height is this over here. So this is the height is the amount of rows times the size of one row. And this is the length of the first row, which is the amount of columns times the size of a tile. There we go. Um, perfect. Okay, so now let's work on the collision between the map and the actor. So there are many different ways to do that. And um, for this video, I'm gonna implement the easiest one. And in the next episode, I'm gonna implement a better one. So what we are going to do is in the player update, when we update the position, right now we simply do um, increase the value of X and Y, and we don't really check collision or anything. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save the old position of the player, and I call it all X and all Y. Gonna move the player exactly like it used to be, and at the end I'm gonna check A, is the movement valid? Okay, so is position wall self. So I move the player, I check A, is it currently inside a wall? And if he's inside a wall, I'm gonna revert its position to what it used to be. So it's exactly like he hasn't moved at all. So this is not optimal, but like I said, my goal right now is just to make something that works. And I'm gonna do exactly the same for the enemy. So enemy update position. 
here. I'm going to save the old position. There we go. OK, so this is how it looks with the current um, code. So as you can see, if I try to go up over here, it's going to prevent me from going up. Same goes for going left, um, going down. Um, so as you can see, you can go down pretty a lot before actually being blocked. And this is because the middle, we are testing the collision with the middle of the player and the middle of the player is the face. So as long as the face is not in a wall, you will be able to, to go there. So it's not um, very well done. So what I'm planning to do in the next episode in, is use a more um, a better strategy, which is using four bumpers. So there will be one bumper um, right, left, up and down. And if one of the bumper touches something, it's going to be considered as an invalid movement. OK, so now I'm going to show you how I managed to generate this list of one and zero. So the, the collision grid. So I'm using the software called Tile. It's a free software. I will put the link in the description. So simply download the software, open it, um, create your map. I will not cover how to create a map here. There's a documentation um, on, on the Tile website and um, want to keep it short. But basically you create your map as normal and you create a layer over here that will be called collision. And everywhere where you don't want the player to go, you add a, an image. It can be anything really. You just put um, something over where you don't want people to go. And when you save, save the, the project, so yeah, save as, you save it as a JSON over here. And after saving it as a JSON, what you can do is that you can edit it, you can actually read what the JSON is. And you can check Oh, collision layer, this over here, the data, this is the list of all the tiles with the image associated with it. And in my case, if there's um, my red tile over here, my red tile is um, 500 and Two. So over here, so what I can do is I can use this data and generate the, the this over here. So I copy paste it. So this is my array. Now one thing to consider a little a little different is that this array over here is a 1D array. So it's um, not in 2D. So we'll need to convert that into 2D. So there are many ways to do that. One of them is this over here. You loop through the um, the height, then you loop through the width. And for each of them, you create a 2D array um, one step at a time. So with this, um, I can replace this with that over here. And it's all going to work. If I go back to here, refresh, and the collision is still working. So I guess that will be pretty much it about this video. I hope you liked it. And don't forget to click the annotation on the screen to go check out the next episode. So what I'm planning to do is to um, make the collision system a little bit better. So um, it's going to be a little bit more accurate. And I'm also going to make it so monster cannot spawn inside buildings. So that's not really convenient. So thanks a lot for watching and see ya.